Turka, it's really nice to see you again. Likewise. So, I understand that uh, I'm not an airline expert, although I spend far too much, uh, you know, traveling uh, at airlines and, and, of course, love to travel with Finnair. Uh, but, um, you know, air airlines, of course, use a lot of fuel, jet fuel. So tell me, if you think about competitiveness from the standpoint of an airline, you know, what is, what, what is the role of fuel in terms of cost or, or you know, how, I, I assume it's a big, it's a big cost air, fuel in general for an airline. As a, a single item or cost component, that is the biggest cost item in, in our PL. So, therefore, it's an ultra important uh, topic for us. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you need to have this uh, day after tomorrow horizon uh, when it comes to translating gradually your traditional jet fuel into um, SAF. Sure. And there, I think it all boils down to availability and affordability. And that, that is, I guess, the joint challenge that as, a, as, as an ecosystem we have if we really want to achieve the medium to long-term targets when it comes to uh, CO2 reduction. Right. I think this you know, availability and affordability or, or cost competitiveness, I think these are very important words. And I think from the stand, standpoint of Nesto, of course, you know, we want to be present on all key continents. You know, we have joint venture in the United States, you know, we're in Europe, we're in, 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 in Asia, Singapore. So I think that is one thing. And then the other thing is in terms of affordability, I agree with you. You have to be thinking long-term, but you have to compete today. That's very important for us so that we will get very good service and also cost competitiveness on, on daily basis without forgetting at the second time horizon that we are continuously also jointly and decisively uh, investing into the future and also finding the solutions for the fuel technology because uh, in my opinion that's the only way uh, to find a sustainable roadmap or pathway towards the CO2 uh, emission reduction because uh, even though different technologies are being developed as we speak when it comes to the trust or power solutions for aircrafts. But if we take a wide body aircraft that is supposed to fly, let's say, 10 hours, 11 hours, sure. 12 hours, uh, 400 passengers on board, uh, electricity and hydrogen are not solutions uh, for, for this decade, maybe towards the midpoint or end of, end of next decade. So therefore, it all boils down to fuel technology Indeed. when it comes to the next 10 years Indeed. roadmap. Indeed. No, I, I, have, I have to agree that it, it sounds very logical that uh, liquid fuel is going to be around for a long, long yes. time, you know. Maybe electrical airplanes will be coming, you know, but it's going to be a very, very small fraction. But uh, I think during our careers, yes. you know, you're younger than I am, but I think even during your career, liquid fuel will play an incredibly important role for, for decades to come. And so, so working together, I hope, uh, we will be able to find even more effective solutions on how to how to develop stuff and, and of course use it for your planes. Uh, that, that is correct and that, that's something <laughs> that we, we value having Neste as a, our strategic partner when it comes to running the day-to-day -day business but also creating a roadmap and different scenarios uh, for the future development of stuff. Turka, I want to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you today. I also want to thank Finnair uh, for being a valuable, really important customer to Neste. We appreciate the relationship and we appreciate also the chance to serve you. Thank you, Heikki, and uh, good luck on your new job. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.